This program is proudly brought to you by Sporting Bet. I'm Nick Quinn and welcome to Chewing the Fat's Emirates Stakes Day Preview. It's going to be a bumper day at Flemington to wrap up the four day carnival and what a carnival it's been. The highlight this Saturday might be the mighty mare Black Caviar as she's going to win yet another race. Tuesday's Emirates Melbourne Cup was a great race, the French did it again. I welcome my co-hosts Edward Sadler and Natalie Hunter. Are you both happy the French Raiders got the chocolates again? No. No. Well, I backed Americaine. No, no, you got the wrong one. You went the wrong Frenchie. I know, it's a bit of a disaster, but anyway. No, terrific cap. One of the best we've seen. One of the, well, not one of, it was the closest cap in history. I'd just like to add, though, credit where credit is due. Nick Quinn's tipping feats have improved off the boards, and best bet of the day was his tip in the kind and cap, which Julie said. So, congratulations to Nicholas. That must have taken a lot for you to say that. It did. I had to. It was a character-building exercise. You know what worries me a little bit, though? I did see Edward reading the letters before that were sent him with a big cheeky grin on his yeah, face. So I'm worried he's just giving me a little bit of a pump-up before... I know. Before, before you bring him right down. Yes. But seriously, I'm a little bit sad that the carnival's coming to an end. Have you enjoyed the carnival? I've had a great time. It's it, been excellent. It, it's gone so quickly, though, hasn't it? It has gone so, so quickly. It's unbelievable. Have you done a lot of socialising? I have been a little bit of a social butterfly mm. in, in the birdcage, and that's been fun. But it's not over yet, so we've still got Stakes Day to go. So when you've been doing your socialising, there have been, you know, a few men trying to impress you from time to time? No. I'm just concentrated on the horses and, um, and what I'm wearing, and that's it. Hypothetically, though, if a man was to impress you, how would he go about doing it? Do you uh, want to find out for yourself? No, Nick? I'm just using this as a way to get the free tip, yes. He'd continue just, on with the show. he continue on with the show. Mm -hmm. But would he be able to buy you a drink? <laughs> yes. He'd buy you a drink, okay. Would you maybe be impressed with a man who's good on his feet? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Now, now, I like a man a who's saying, good on his feet. There is a saying that a man that's good on the dance floor is good in the bedroom. So with that in mind, we show you this footage. <laughs> Well, we do apologise to Edward's grandmother, Mari, for showing that embarrassed footage of her scene with Edward. You f <laughs> <laughs> That's it, that does it, I'm out of here. Oh, he's had a throw down. Oh. Edward's okay. out of there. Oh, okie doke. Well, I'll pick up from here. The wheel's just been called. It was a big morning <laughs> out at Werribee and Tring the Fat caught up with Junidin. So we're going to leave you with a package from Werribee and make sure Edward's... Okay, Nick, I think you should go and deal with that. <laughs> Gilbert, the morning after, has it all sunk in yet? Uh, yeah, no, it's a uh, hunt. The night has been chopped. <laughs> what What did you get up to last night? Uh, we went for a big, uh, big dinner. We spent here for people, and uh, then we celebrated in a kind of a bar. And uh, anyway, so it was a good fun. And what time did you get to bed? Oh, I don't remember. Quite late. <laughs> And just how big an achievement is this? Massive. I, I don't think there's a bigger race to win. Um, I don't know, I'm, I've been truly lucky to, to have done it on my second year. You know, we're going to come back and back and back and back and try and repeat this time and time again. Um, Sheikh Fahad has already said he wants to take on Bart Cummings, Bart Cummings' record. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're very competitive about it and we can't wait to get involved again. Sporting Bet is built by punters for punters so you get the very best experience. At Sporting Bet you can expect more from the latest in customised betting with black books, favourites and iForm.
Plus, Sporting Bet covers all the exotics, including trifectas, quinellas, exactas, and first four. Bet fast online or at sbet.mobi on your mobile, anytime, anywhere. That's why there's no better bet than a Sporting Bet. Welcome back to Chewing the Fat. Now, I've managed to do a little bit of marriage counselling during the break, and I've now got these two on reasonable terms so that they can sit together on the couch. How are you feeling, boys? Good, he's calmed uh, out uh, after his little party. It's very tough. I, you know, I gave him a rap at the start of the show, Nat, mm -hmm. and that's the way he treats me. It just shows you. <laughs> yes. Later on in the show, it, it gets worse with this yeah, person. Yeah, it does. I'm, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do it. I think I've got one episode left in me and that's it of chewing the fat until, uh, I, <laughs> while Nick Quinn is here. Cause He's very antagonistic, I'll give you that. Yeah. No, that was outstanding. I never knew you were such a smooth operator. All right. You're full of <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, another beep out. Okay, let's have a look at the track conditions for tomorrow. The expected track conditions are the rail is the rail positions to be advised still, but expected dead four track and fine weather. I think it's going to be about 30 degrees, which is really exciting. Mm, always good to uh, have a nice sunny day out on family day, Emirates Stokes Day. Yes, it is. Is that because the, the fillies wear less clothes? Well, they wear less anyway. They I do. mean, you go to the young members' days in May when it's 10 degrees and they're still dress like it's a bikini party. So. Yeah. Oh. Are you complaining, Edward? I'm not complaining. <laughs> I'm just saying some girls are a little bit stupid when it comes to dress sense. Uh, yes. Jeez, yeah, whack. Cop He's that. putting it all out there. All right, race five is the Group 1 Patnak Farm Classic, over 1,200 metres, and the champion mare Black Caviar is going to be racing in this one. Let's take a look at the market with only seven runners. Starting off with Black Caviar, who is at $1.06. Midsummer Music, one of four Peter Moody runners at $17. Buffering at $21. Response at $26. Kurtana, $41. Scenic Blast at $51. And Panapeak at $101. Boys, what do you think of this one? Skinny odds? I think you just sit back, relax and enjoy watching the best horse in the world going around. Um, but look, as far as exotics go, well, Peter Moody's basically put... He has got over half the field in this race just to make sure that there are enough horses to go around. Midsummer Music was terrific on Saturday uh, in the Salmon. She came from well back and she always runs a good race, so she's always a good place bet. Not sure just because there's only seven horses in it, so it means you have to, she, has to, she does have to finish second for you to collect on your place bet. Response was disappointing. I thought Buffering was disappointing last time at Caulfield. Kurtana likes the straight. Um, scenic Blast, no, for me, after, look, he's a new market winner, a lightning winner, but he needed to do more at the Valley for me. And Panapeak, I think she's over the odds at 101. Yeah, well, Panapeak, yeah, well, as, uh, as Natalie alluded to off air, Panapeak was one in our very first shows that Cameron White came on and tipped and came out and won easily at Caulfield that Saturday. Hasn't really fired a shot since, but... If she could reproduce that Caulfield run, would you think she could fill a place in it, you know, at big odds? But don't you, like, Black Caviar, it's, a, of course, a champion horse, but everybody has an off day. There's only seven runners. Wouldn't it be worth just putting money on all of them? No, no, no. I, I'm look, going to. No, no. It'd be like saying Usain Bolt's quick, but what if he falls over? It'd be like us racing Usain Bolt. Like, we just cannot win. Well, I think he, Black Caviar might, you know, he might not feel like... Performing that day. Well, do you think I could beat you? You say Bolt could beat Nick Quinn and I drunk. All right, well. Bolt's drunk in this case, actually. That, <laughs> okay. Just to clarify just, that yeah, statement. Right. Um, well, look, if Hayless was running around in this race or a horse of his caliber, you could uh, still make the case that if she has an off day, yes. they win. But, even but if there's she has nothing an off day, there. She wins by two lengths instead of six. Like, yeah, right, even okay. on her, her off on a bad day would still be far too far. I right. think there's only one horse in the world that could beat her. Who? Frankel. And until that day, then we're just going to Until keep... that day in June, if it does ever arrive, I think she'll remain unbeaten. All right. Well, Team Averton and Zara have a runner in this race with response. Let's hear what Simon Zara had to say. 
start off response runs in the Padnack Farm. Uh, what did you think of a run last Saturday? Oh, look, it was pretty disappointing. Um, you know, we sort of targeted the Maya a long way out and probably had a train right up and it was probably really disappointing. She got off the fence and the run came and she just spat the bit. So uh, we're just going to back her up and uh, we'll work her in the blinkers tomorrow morning and, and just to try and sharpen her up. And, you know, if she doesn't pull too hard with them, we'll, we might apply them on Saturday. All right, let's have a look at all of our selections for this race. No prizes for guessing who we all went for. BC. BC. You just tipped against Black Cavalry. I'd said you were tipping uh, every other, other run. I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna bet on all the others, but I'm I'm tipping Black Caviar. So you're tipping Black Caviar, and on, you're gonna on, bet on every on. other horse. Yeah, so you're giving our viewers is there the some sort of role reversal going on here. Nick Quinn's the one that normally makes the controversial statement, sticks his neck out, general, and often loses. It comes back worse for wear. Mm -hmm. Is this your turn now? I, After one, I don't want to go. You're saying these ridiculous things. Yeah, it's that. true. So I if shouldn't. Black, if Black Caviar wins, you will be in a schoolgirl or nurse outfit next week. You're just, I will be wearing You're a dress. You're disgusting. All right. Being the other group one for the day is race six, the Emirate States over the mile, and what an incredible field in this one. Let's have a look at the market thanks to Sporting Bet. Starting off with Jimmy Chu, who is at five dollars fifty and the favourite. Kings Rose at six dollars fifty. Secret Admirer at seven dollars. Test of My Patience eight dollars fifty. Love Conquers All at nine dollars. Wall Street at eleven dollars. Wurum at thirteen dollars. Elbert the Fat at fifteen. Red Tracer and Lewin Yat Forever at eighteen dollars. Deo Deo and He's Remarkable as well as Turak Toff at twenty one dollars. Pinwheel at twenty six. Willie Jimmy, Dan Lee and Yose at thirty one dollars. Boys? Look, it's going to be a cracking race. It's a lot of horses in this race coming out of the Cox Plate, so it's quite easy to draw a form line through that. I'm going to stick with the horse that was runner-up in the Cox Plate, Jimmy Shu. Ran a cracker in the Cox Plate. I think he's going to be better suited at the 1,600 metres tomorrow and more than happy to stick with the New Zealander. Ran a terrific race, didn't he, in the Cox Plate when he mm. finished second. It was only because Craig Williams uh, rode Pinker Pinker, an absolute treat in that race. Uh, that he got done. King's Rose, she's done everything right since she's been in Australia and can't really fault her Cox Plate run. I thought it was good enough coming into a race like this. I think she'd be better suited to the 1600 metres. Secret Admirer also ran very well uh, in the Cox Plate. Wall Street's another one that I think is over the odds at $11. You can't forget Love Conquers All. I think Test of My Patience. I don't know about that that he's a group one horse, to be honest. Oh, it was but, ultra impressive, Cox Plate Day. Oh, he was, but he took on the group two milers in that race, and I think they were group two milers. He takes on group one horses here. I mean, Jimmy Shoe, King's Rose, Secret Admirer. You throw in Wall Street and Love Conquers All. They're group one, they're genuine group one horses. And a class uh, Testing my patience. Look, I could be wrong. I think he ran a terrific race at Mooney Valley. I'm just saying that step up to Group 1 is an unknown and I'm not sure whether he's up for it. Either way, it's pretty good value betting by the looks of things. It's going to be a very good betting race and if you can find the winner, you'll be richly rewarded. And just one thing we should also keep in mind, when you get to this time of the carnival, you know, the last couple of days, you're getting a lot of tired horses who have been going around for a long time and so the Emirates yes. does have a history of throwing up a roughie. You look at your um, Tears I Cry, Sky Cuddles, Valedictum. A lot of those horses have come through the race, um, you know, 50, 40, 50, 60 to 1 shots in the race. So it does have a history of being a Ruffy's race. The last Ruffy, of course, all American ran down, so you think, uh, that year. So okay. it is a Ruffy. It can be a Ruffy's race. So this is definitely a race. If you're ever going to pick a horse just, just on its name or its colours, this is the, this is the race. This is the one in. you do that in. Okay. Yeah. Edward caught up with Paul Snowden and John Hawkes. Take a look. Pinwheel runs in the Emirates. What do you think of his run behind Love Conquers all last time? I think it was pretty good. I think he's just indicating to us now he just wants a little bit further and it's something, you know, uncharted waters with this guy. He hasn't been past 1,400 before, so um, just every indication suggests that he wants the mole now and hopefully, um, you know, he can be effective. Has he been targeted at this race? Yeah, actually, um, when he ran at Caulfield in that 1,400, Dad always thought we'll give him a freshen up and, and we'll have a crack at the Emirates with him. So, um, look, we're here, we're fit, we're in good order. Just hopefully he can draw a good gate and he can run well. You saddled up Love Conquers all in the Emirates Stakes here on Saturday. Must have been happy with its win at Caulfield last time. Yeah, really, really good. He just, you know, hopefully he can draw a gate. You know, it's a, that's a very important. But he's trained on really good and he's got nice weights, so he's certainly going to be right in the mix, I think.
has he been targeted at this race, this preparation? Yeah, it's always been his race, you know, that we've sort of tried to, you know, aim to and, uh, you know, everything's on schedule. And a step up to the 1600 will suit? Yeah, I think that'll really suit in the mile and, you know, Flemington and as I said, he hit the line really good the other day, so, no, we're really pleased. OK, let's review our selections for the 2011 Emirates Stakes. Starting off with you, Nick, who have you chosen? Sticking with the five, Jimmy Choo. Jimmy Choo, OK. I've gone for a box trifecta with Jimmy Choo, Albert the Fat and Love Conquers All and Edward. Sticking with Jimmy, but um, you made mention before, Nat, that you like the names in this race. It's a girly sort it's of race. It's such a girls race. There are so many with them. Um, let's have a look. There's Love Conquers All. Jimmy Choo, of course, is a... Is a girl, definitely a girl's horse. Secret admirer. So Kim Kardashian's not going to have any, any issue picking one in this, this race. This race is going to make Kim Kardashian feel sick to her stomach, I think. Let's take a break. You're watching Chewing the Fat thanks to Sporting Bet. And don't forget, for all the latest odds, go to sportingbet.com.au. Sporting Bet is built by punters for punters so you get the very best experience. At Sporting Bet you can expect more from the latest in customised betting with black books, favourites and iForm. Plus Sporting Bet covers all the exotics including trifectas, quinellas, exactas and first four. Bet fast online or at sbet.mobi on your mobile anytime, anywhere. That's why there's no better bet than a Sporting Bet. Increase your chances of winning by nominating your yearling to Australia's richest incentive scheme, Super Vobus. Super Vobus guarantees you higher rewards on the racetrack and makes your yearling more attractive to prospective purchasers. With over $13 million of incentives on offer every season, Super Vobus is the colour of money. Nominations close February the 1st, so for further information, call Super Vobus on 03 9258 4694 or visit the website. Welcome back. Okay, group two is the Matriarch Stakes over 2,000 metres. Let's take a look at the market. Sky Rush at $3.40, the favourite Platinum Passion at $6, Avienus at $7.50, Vintage at $8, Teardrop Rock $11, Kai's the Limit at $15, Our Alabella $17, She's a 10 at $18, and $21 or better the rest. Nick, what do you think? I think it's a very good race. I think the favourite Sky Rush, though, is well well placed, well weighted, and looks hard to beat. But one that I am going to include at about the $18 is the John Sadler, Edward Sire, trained uh, horse named after his niece. She's a 10, who I think will give a good account of herself after a very impressive win last start. He's like a dog on heat, this fella, I he have to say. He is a terror today, isn't he? He is, he, and the best is still yet to come. Oh. Or the worst, depending on what side of the fence you're on. You Sky Rush going look from Group 1 company to Group 2, step up to 2,000 metres should definitely suit. Platinum Passions, the experienced mare in the race, uh, she should run a very good race. I'm, I'm not sure about Aviennes. I know that Flemington 2000 should suit, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from her in the Cox Plate, to be honest. I mean, Is there confidence from the stable on She's a 10? Well, it's third emergency, so needs to get a run for a start. <laughs> um, and the other thing with She's a 10 is she's obviously going from Ballarat, Ballarat to Group 2 Flemington. But she was brilliant. She yeah, brained them. Yeah, she beat you and me, basically. Oh, so horses. you're putting the, you're putting the opposition not, there. I've, look, it was an ordinary race, field of six. Oh. It's nice to actually hear, I know Edward isn't the trainer, but usually the trainers pump up their own horses. It's nice to hear... A, a very level-headed opinion about it. I thought it was a little bit disrespectful for the horses that uh, Not even. He, he wouldn't. No, he wouldn't disrespect uh, I would like to give a shout-out to Todd Balfour, who, of course, is Sean Ballymore in this race, coming off a win in Adelaide, 26 is plus. Um, You're not a rap star now. You can't just stand up here and give <laughs> shout-outs. <laughs> We're trying to find a winner for the viewers. I'm getting to that, <laughs> Mr Quinn. You can Hang on, you can throw shout-outs to my grandma <laughs> down the camera, but I can't yeah. throw shout-outs to the trainers in the race. <laughs> He's got a point. Look, I think, though, instead of... Oh, I hadn't finished, but obviously... <laughs> no, we, we've matter. moved on. Yeah. While it is always great to have Edward give us the inside word on the stable, I think what might be equally and possibly even more beneficial would be to just go straight to the man himself, John Sadler. Edward caught up with him and Steve Dennett. And she's a 10 runs in the matriarch. That was a pretty effortless win last time at Ballarat. It was. It was, it was the, the company wasn't strong, but um, it was more a matter of, of uh, uh, how she won it rather than what she beat. 
and um, she's trained on really well. Probably looks to be out of a class a little bit, but it's got to be remembered she did run fifth in the Oaks last year. Um, she'll probably be seen be seen at her best over a little further than than the 2000. But look, she's going really well, um, you know, and wouldn't you know. It wouldn't surprise me to see her fill a hole, and it, obviously very important being a mare to try and get some black type if we can. Teardrop Rock runs in the matriarch. Yeah, she um, is going to have a run in the matriarch, try and get a bit of black type. Um, she's done well since she's been down here, so hopefully she'll run a good race. Happy with the way she's been working? Yeah, the boss said she um, did work well this morning. Uh, Nash rode in a bit of pace work this morning, and they were very pleased with her. OK, let's have a look at our selections for the Group 2 Matriarch State. Starting off with you, Edward, you've gone for Skyrush. Yep. Nick, you've also gone for Skyrush, and I've gone for Feminine Fashion. Well, Edward and I have explained why we've given our selection. What about yourself, Nat? What reasons have you come up with here? I liked its run on Saturday. OK. What? And I know that it came second, but, I mean, second's better than fourth. It placed, maybe it's due for a win, so I, I'm... I'm backing it. Mm, and you go. can laugh. No, I'm not laughing. I'm now pleased to know that second is better than fourth. Yeah, mm. well, I'm glad I've taught you something, Nick, because you're a simple human being and it's those things that... What, what are you going to reveal, Nick? What groundbreaking revelations <laughs> are you going to make next, Nat? That uh, after Tuesday last week... is a day that follows Monday or that Nick Quinn's hair is obviously a wig or <laughs> what other revelations? First is better than second. Oh. Did you know that? I think we're going to find out after the break that the earth doesn't revolve around the sun. It's getting very cheeky. I think from now on when we get, he gets cheeky, we don't retaliate. We just show the dancing footage. Yeah, I think so. You're right. Good idea. Good idea. Oh, I wrapped it again. All right. While Edward's having his hissy fit, don't forget to view all the trainers' interviews in full. Go to victorianstellions.tv forward slash news. Now, Edward, you've got to come back because we have to... Uh, have a bit of a discussion about the Group 3 Queen Elizabeth Stakes. And there are some fam familiar names here. I'll make sure he doesn't get stuck into you again. Starting off with Bauer at $2.50, the favourite. Macedonian at $5. And Najwan, how do I say that, that one? Was Anajuan. Anajuan. That was spot on. And Najwan at $8. Shoot off at $9. Einstein at $11. Boom and Zoom at seventeen, Montgomery at eighteen dollars, Patty O'Reilly at nineteen dollars, and thirty-one dollars or better the rest. Nick, look, I think it's going to be great to see Bauer hopefully get the win that he so richly deserves. He was extremely unlucky not to get a run in the Melbourne Cup. He had a lot of merit to be there where a few horses didn't. Quite simply, he was robbed of the opportunity to run in the race. Connections should feel very disappointed by what happened. Hopefully, though, they can get something out of the fire with a win in a good race like this. What do you think, John Travolta? I have to say one thing. You know what one thing I have learnt this carnival? What is that? Nick Quinn does not have the best hair in racing. <sighs> he has the second best hair in racing. Who has the best? Sydney racing journalist Ray Thomas has the best set of locks going around. And, and he has trounced Nick. How do you feel, Nick, Nick? Nick? Before the carnival, Nick was strutting around the place like he owned it. The big dog. And then Ray Thomas comes in and Nick walks around the track now with his tail between his legs. Oh, he pulls he, he, You know, and he's he's even sold out as well, this carnival. That's another Okay, thing well, we're going to get to that. Now, Edward, we'll get to the, there's well, a 100,000 bonus up for grabs so ho for horses who nominated for the cup and missed the final field. That's pretty good. It is pretty good, but I'd rather be running in the cup, to be honest. That's true. Um, Bow should just win. Really? I mean, you look at the Geelong Cup, Dunedin won it, came out and won the Melbourne Cup, Tamby second, and won the Bendigo Cup. He's run third, he's missed out on a run in the Cup, he ran second in the Cup three years ago. He does perform, obviously, well at Flemington, he's in good form. Racing better than ever. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You have to, but look, Macedonian, I thought, ran a really good race uh, in the Lexus. And I think he's a Flemington horse. Well, I thought it was a flattering run in the Lexus where all the leaders capitulated and he was sort of running on the end. I thought it was his best run this campaign. Well, there we go. I'll say we'll miss a place on Saturday. Uh, Boom and Zoom's the other uh, place claims. Uh, Cranbourne Cup winner. But We've all I, gone. Think, I think they're the ones. I think, look, if you're having a bet, I'd be backing Bauer straight out and I'd have something, say, each way Macedonian. All right, well, let's have a look at our selections, which isn't going to take very long because we've all gone for the same thing. We've all gone for Bauer and the Queen Elizabeth Stakes.
Well, we've previewed the major races for Flemington on Saturday and Emirates Stakes Day. This is what the trainers had to say about their best runners for the day. John, best of your three runners for Saturday? Um, they're all three are only, only rough chances. I, I'd have to say um, on an each way basis, uh, perhaps she's a 10. I'd say red rain each way. Uh, Dormello. Hard day, um, I would say Errol won. We love your feedback, guys, so why not drop us a line, feedback at chewingthefat.com.au. Or if you want to email Nick Quinn directly, what is it again, Edward? It's uh, slitherer at chewingthefat.com.au. Yeah. So that's the one if you want to get Nick directly. Yeah, that's his direct line. Let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll have your emails and our best bets. Don't go away. You're watching Chewing the Fat, thanks to Sporting Bet. Sporting Bet is built by punters for punters so you get the very best experience. At Sporting Bet you can expect more from the latest in customised betting with black books, favourites and iForm. Plus Sporting Bet covers all the exotics including trifectas, quinellas, exactas and first four. Bet fast online or at sbet.mobi on your mobile anytime, anywhere. That's why there's no better bet than a Sporting Bet. Lost Brokers Bloodstock. For horse owners, by horse owners. With all the answers to protect your investment, Ost Brokers work for you to provide the right cover and the best value. And most importantly, they're in your corner when you make a claim. Ost Brokers business is built around relationships. That's why our clients have been with us for so long. Horses are not just our business, they're our life. Why not talk to one of our team today? Call us on 029-570-8355 or go to our website, bloodstockinsurance.com.au. Ausbrokers, young faces, years of experience. Well, it's now time for one of my favourite segments, the reading of the letters from all our fans out there. And Michael Flatley, you're going to get us going here, are you? Please explain that reference. Uh, he's a dancer, a bit like yourself. Ah, uh, yep. You're funny, aren't you? Carry on. <laughs> This one is from Chris from One Turner South. Chris has to say, love the show, guys, and one of the things I love about the show is the loyalty, the friendship, and the camaraderie between the three of you. Hope that never changes. Sadly, I have to say this to you, Chris, it has changed. My co-host has gone behind my back, <laughs> pulled the knife out, cut my lunch. Now I know how Kevin Rudd felt last year when this happened to him. All beaten slightly yeah. different circumstances, yeah. but it's still the same principle. Net yeah. girl, I might have been interested in, and Nick just swooped hard, and he did. He's Edward, in fact taking he her into, to he, the races. Oh, Edward, he's Edward. taking her to the. Yeah, he's, he's just cut like, his lunch into not, four pieces, and he's not just like. It. And the worst thing is, right in front of me, because I'll be there as well. Oh, so hey, it's hey. just. Please use him, and I'll just finish on this. Do not send a boy to do a man's job. Natalie, what have you got from the readers? I actually refuse to get involved in these antics, so you read your email. Okay. I've actually got 137 different emails, all of them along the same line. They love the Wonder Woman outfit, and when will they be seeing it again? Oh, good. They liked it. That's good. Well, they won't be seeing it again, but, of course, they can just replay that episode. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure there's been plenty of <laughs> blokes doing that, but, unfortunately, it does cut to Edward very sharply a few times, so they've got to be very precise with the mouse <laughs> movements. Oh. Any other fancy dresses? You, you are, like, really, like a dog on heat. Like, how long has it been for you, Nick? Have any other talk emails? about... Do you have any other so, I know you said don't send a boy to do a man's job, but gee, you haven't been doing the job at all lately. I oh, okie doke. Let's take a look at our best bets and roughies for tomorrow. We've got to get off that topic. Okay, starting with you, Nick, your best bet? Uh, I'm going with He's Remarkable in race two. Is an emergency for the Emirates Stakes. The Roger James New Zealand galloper was ultra impress impressive at Mooney Valley last start on a track that didn't suit. The big Flemington straight will be ideal, and this horse looks a great bet. Okay, Edward? Bow for me. I think he's just tomorrow in the Queen Elizabeth. And Sean Barrymore is a place bet uh, in the Matriarch Stakes. We're doing As I was now. about to shout out before. Okay, so that's our your roughie, Sean Barrymore. Esteemed co host shut me down. Right, okay. So that, that's your best bet and roughie. My best bet is Melbourne Race 6, number one, Jimmy Chu. Um, and my best roughie is Race 8, number, tw number 12, Spachenka. 
That was very well horses? pronounced. Now you have to say your best rough in it. I like Sabres in race three, race three number eight at about the $16 mark. One very impressively last start and I think represents terrific value. Okay. Well, of course, it is family day at Flemington on Saturday, so if you've got the kids, bring them out. It's going to be 30 degrees. You're going to see the best horse in the world going around. It'll be a day you'll remember. Just so long as you stay away from Nick Quinn, it'll be a family day for everybody. So make sure you get out to Flemington. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Saturday. I will definitely be out there to see Black Caviar race. When will we see Black Caviar race again? I think she'll have a little spell and then head to Perth for the few sprint races over there, similar to what Takeover Target did a couple of years ago. So Not too long a spell. That's only two weeks till the Whittam Bottom on a Perth Super Saturday. So... That'll be a big day for Perth racing. Um, and, of course, if you do get to Flemington on Saturday, as we've been discussing for the whole show, you can catch Nick mowing the lawn before the first race. Yeah. And then chopping up your lunch. So I have done my bit in the Wonder Woman suit. I was thinking you're so sure about Black Caviar and, of course, you have good reason to be. So you wouldn't be concerned if I said to you, if Black Caviar loses, we can cut your hair next week on the show in the studio? That's fine. If you can get the shearers, that's absolutely fine. I actually think, no, I don't think that's fair. Black mm -hmm. Caviar will win. It's not fair at all. You stuck your head out on a ruffie. I did. I think Nick should stick his hair out on a ruffie. Oh, I love it. Okay, so what was your ruffie? It was Sabres. silly Sabres. Sabres. If Sabres doesn't, doesn't run win, a place. I won't replay the Edward dancing clip again. No, no, no. no. We will we have played head. it twice a day. People can just replay it as many times as they like when they're feeling low and they need a laugh. I think if Sabres doesn't run a place on Saturday, mm -hmm. I think there should be we something left. We can cut your hair. Awesome. Deal done. Done. Yeah. Okay. Well, that wraps up what's been a massive carnival for Flemington. Join us next week for our final episode in the series, the Sandown Classic Preview. We leave you with some of the colour that's been this week at Flemington. This program is proudly brought to you by Sporting Bet. This has been a Thorough Media production.